Gucci, his stepmother, became very envious of the child. My dear child.
Lord Brahma acquired the necessary qualifications to create this universe. My dear boy, you should take shelter of the Supreme Lord also, who is very kind to his devotees. As far as I am concerned, I do not find anyone who can mitigate your distress, but the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whose eyes are like lotus petals. Therefore, after deliberate consideration, and with intelligence and fixed determination, he left his father's house. Great sage Narad Muni overheard this news and understanding all the activities of Jehu Maharaj, he was struck with wonder. My dear boy, you are only a little boy whose attachment is to sports and other frivolities. Why are you so affected by words insulting your honor? This kind of dissatisfaction is another feature of the illusory energy of the Lord. Now you have decided to undertake the mystic processes of meditation under the instruction of your mother, just to achieve the mercy of the Lord. But in my opinion, such austerities are not possible for any ordinary man. It is very difficult to satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead. After trying this process for many, many births and remaining unattached to material contamination, many mystic yogis were unable to find the end of the path of God-realization. For this reason, my dear boy, you should not endeavor for this. It will not be successful. It is better that you go home. When you are grown up, by the mercy of the Lord, you will get a chance for these mystic performances. At that time, you may execute this function. My dear Lord Naraji, for a person whose heart is disturbed by the material conditions of happiness and stress, whatever you have so kindly explained for the attainment of a peace of mind is certainly a very good instruction. But as far as I am concerned, I am covered by ignorance, and this kind of philosophy does not touch my heart. My dear Lord, I am very impudent for not accepting your instructions, but, but this is not my fault. It is due for me having been born in a Satriya family. My stepmother Saruchi has pierced my heart with her harsh words. O oh, learned Brahman, I want to occupy a position more exalted than any yet achieved within the three worlds by anyone. Even by my father's and grandfather's The instruction given by your mother, Saniti, to follow the path of devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead is just suitable for you. You should therefore completely absorb yourself in the devotional service of the Lord. My dear boy, I therefore wish all good fortune for you. You should go to the bank of the Yamuna, where there is a virtuous forest named Maduvan, and there be purified. And after bathing, you should perform the necessary regulative principles for Ashtanga Yoga, and then sit down on your asana in a calm and quiet position. Practice the three kinds of breathing exercises, and thus gradually control the life air, the mind, and the senses. Completely free yourself from all material contamination and with great patience begin to meditate on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Lord's form is always youthful. He is more beautiful than all the demigods. The entire body of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vasudev, is decorated. He wears a valuable jeweled helmet, necklaces and bracelets. His neck is adorned with the Kristova jewel, and he is dressed in yellow silk garments 
and wears a beautiful flower garland around his neck. The Lord is decorated with small golden bells around his waist, and his lotus feet are decorated with golden ankle bells. All his bodily features are very attractive and pleasing to the eyes. One who meditates in this way, concentrating his mind upon the always auspicious form of the Lord, is very soon freed from all material contamination, and he does not come down from meditation upon the Lord. Now I shall speak unto you the mantra which is to be chanted with this process of meditation. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya This is the twelve syllable mantra for worshipping Lord Krishna. My dear Druva, besides chanting the mantra, you should meditate upon the transcendental activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in His different incarnations as exhibited by His Supreme Will and personal potencies. Anyone who thus engages in the devotional service of the Lord seriously and sincerely with his mind, words and body is blessed by the Lord according to his desire. If a devotee desires material religiosity, economic development, sense gratification or liberation from the material world, he is awarded these results. When Dhruva Maharaj, the son of the king, was thus advised by the great sage Narad, he started for Manuvan, which is always imprinted with the lotus footprints of Lord Krishna, and which is therefore especially auspicious. <laughs> Elsewhere, Dhruva Maharaj, having arrived at Manuvan, took his path to the river Jamuna and observing fasting in the night with great care and attention. Then after that, as advised by the sage Narmuni, he engaged himself in worshipping the Supreme Lord. For the first month, Dhruva Maharaj ate only fruits and berries on every third day, only to keep his body and soul together. In the second month, Dhruva Maharaj ate only every six days, and for his eatables, he took dry grass and leaves. In the third month, he drank water only every nine days. Thus, he remained completely in trance to worship the Supreme Lord Vishnu, who was adored by selected verses. In the fourth month, Dhruva Maharaj became a complete master of the breathing exercise. And thus, he inhaled air only every twelfth day. By the fifth month, Dhruva Maharaj, the son of the king, had controlled his breathing so perfectly that he was able to stand on only one leg, just as a column stands, without motion, and concentrate his mind fully on the Parabrahman. When Dhruva Maharaj had thus captured the Supreme Lord, who was the refuge of the total material creation, and who was the master of all the divinities, then the three worlds began to tremble. As Dhruva Maharaj, the king's son, kept himself steadily standing on one leg, the pressure of his big toe pushed down oh, half the earth, dear. just as an elephant being carried on a boat rocks the boat left and right with every step. When Dhruva Maharaj became practically one in heaviness with Lord Vishnu, the total consciousness, due to his fully concentrating and closing all the holes of his body, the total universal breathing became choked up. And all the great demigods in all the planetary systems felt suffocated and took shelter of the Supreme Personality of God.
are the refuge of all moving and non-moving living entities. We feel all living entities to be suffocating, their breathing processes choked up. We have never experienced such a thing. Since you are the ultimate shelter of all surrendered souls, we have therefore approached you. Please, Please save, save us from, from this danger. My dear demigods, do not be perturbed by this. It is due to the severe austerity and full determination of the son of King Uttanapad, who is now fully absorbed in thought of me. He has obstructed the universal breathing process. You can safely return to your respective homes. I shall stop this boy in his severe acts of austerities, and you will be saved from this situation. When the demigods were thus reassured by the prestounded gods, they returned to the heavenly planets. Then the Lord, who is non-different from Sahasrisha, the incarnation of the Lord with a thousand heads. He got back on Garuda, who carried him to the Madhuman forest to see the servant, Jupiter. The form of the Lord, which was brilliant like lightning, and which drew Maharaj his mature yogi all of a sudden disappeared. Thus, Jupiter was perturbed, and his meditation broke. But as soon as he opened his eyes, he saw before him the form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, just as he has been seeing in his own heart. Jupiter Maharaj, in ecstasy, looked upon the Lord as if he were drinking the Lord with his eyes, kissing the Lord's feet of the Lord with his mouth, and embracing the Lord with his arms. Although Jupiter Maharaj was a small boy, he wanted to offer prayers to the Supreme Lord in a suitable language. But because he was inexperienced, he could not adjust himself immediately. The Supreme Lord, being situated in everyone's heart, could understand Guru Maharaja's awkward position. Out of his causeless mercy, he touched his conch shell to the forehead of Guru Maharaj. At that time, Guru Maharaj became perfectly aware of the Vedic conclusion and understood the absolute truth and his relationship with all living entities. My dear Lord, you are all powerful. After entering within me, you have enlivened all my sleeping senses. My hands, legs, ears, touch sensation, my force, and especially my power of speech. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto you. My Lord, you are the Supreme One, but by your different energies, you will appear differently in the spiritual and material worlds. You create the total energy of the material world by your external potency. After creation, you have entered within the material world as the super soul. O oh, unlimited Lord, kindly bless me so that I might, may associate with great devotees who engage in your transcendental loving service constantly. My Lord, O Supreme Lord, you are the supreme personified form of all benediction. Therefore, for one who abides in your devotional service with no other desire, worshiping your lotus feet is better than becoming king and lording it over a kingdom. My dear Drew, son of the king, you have executed pious vows, and I also know the desire within your heart. Although your desire is very ambitious and very difficult to fulfill, I shall favor you with its fulfillment. All good fortune unto you. I shall award you the glowing planet known as the Pole Star. No one has ever ruled this planet, which continues to exist even after the dissolution of all others. All the luminaries in the sky circumambulate this planet 
just as bulls tread around a central pole for the purpose of crushing grains. After your father goes to the forest and awards you the rule of his kingdom, you will rule continuously the entire world for 36,000 years. You will never become old. My dear Dhruva, after your material life in this body, you will go to my planet, which has always offered obeisances by the residents of all other planetary systems. And having gone there, you will never again have to come back to this material world. After being worshipped and honored by the boy, and after offering him his abode, Lord Vishnu on the back of the Buddha returned to his abode as Dhruva Maharaj looked on. Dhruva Maharaj was not very pleased, and thus he returned to his home. Alas, just look at me. I'm so unfortunate. I approach the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who can admittedly cut the chain of the reproduction of birth and death, but still, out of my foolishness, I pray for things that are perishable. Because of my state of complete foolishness, although the Lord offered me his personal service, I wanted material name, fame, and prosperity. My case is just like that of poor man who, when he satisfied a great emperor who wanted to give him anything he might ask, out of ignorance, asked only for a few broken grains of husked rice. When Dhruva returned to his father's palace, the king and his queens were overjoyed to see him, as if returning to life. Even his stepmother, Shruchi, blessed him with a long life. Follow Dhruva, Malak Dhruva, 
and by the instructions of her mother Suniti, he went to the forest and did a hard story. And then Narayan came and gave the bone and was under dham. Disappeared. Then he was thinking, what I have done wrong? <laughs> I received the darshan of Narayan like Chintamani and I wanted only throne of my father. I was searching glasses, glass, broken glass. But Chintamani came, that is Narayan Darshan came. I wanted only kingdom, not liberation and to serve Narayan in by Gunthatham. So he was lamenting. But even he sat on the kingdom, he became and 36,000 years he ruled and after that death came but he killed his left, uh, his feet on the head of death and by the same uh, body hmm, it became like spiritual and he went to through a look. Even through is there, there is a hurry under this Brahman and he is serving. Go Brahman! Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare.